Would you give someone a deadly electric shock? Would you follow orders just to commit a violent crime against an innocent person if someone told you to? Or what about would you support an unjust cause just because someone told you to? People rarely see themselves as violent or capable of committing violent acts. They rarely see themselves on the wrong side of history. And yet, human history is full of violence, genocides, and atrocities. In fact, in today's world, you might even see friends and family now, people that you believe are good people, supporting violence. But how does this happen? Well, I'm going to tell you about an experiment in psychology that's set out to explain why people commit violence against others. And then I'm going to ask you these questions again. The true answers to these questions might surprise you. So, this study is called the Milgram Shock Study, also known as the Milgram Experiment. Its name comes from Stanley Milgram, the psychologist behind the study. So Milgram was born in the 1930s in New York City to Jewish immigrant parents. As he grew up, he witnessed the atrocities of the Holocaust from thousands of miles away. How could people commit such atrocities? How could people see the horror in front of them and continue to participate in it? These questions followed him as he became a psychologist at Yale University. And in 1961, he decided to set up a study that might show how people follow orders from authority, even if it goes against their morals. So, how did the study work? Well, over the course of two years, Milgram recruited men to participate in a study. He created a few variations of the study, but in general, they involved a participant, a learner, and an experimenter. The participant acted as a teacher, reading out words to the learner. The learner would then have to repeat the words back to the participant. And if the learner got the words wrong, the teacher had to deliver an electric shock. Now, these shocks increased in voltage. At first, the shocks were around 15 volts, just a mild sensation. But the shocks reached all the way up to 450 volts, which is actually extremely dangerous. Now, you must know, these shocks were not real. The learner was an actor who played along with the study, so people were not harmed in the study. The experimenter encouraged the participants to administer these shocks whenever the learner was incorrect. As the voltage increased, some participants resisted. In some variations of the study, the experimenter would urge the participants to administer the shocks. This happened in stages. Some participants were told to please continue, and eventually they had no choice but to continue. In some variations of the study, the actor would beg the participant not to administer the shocks, complaining of a heart problem. In some cases, the actor actually would even fake death once the highest voltages were reached. So, you might be surprised to hear that this study even took place. There are obviously some ethical concerns behind asking participants to deliver dangerous electrical and even deadly shocks. The trauma of that study could impact the participants, some of whom did not actually not learn the truth of the study for months after it was over. Maybe they thought they killed someone. But you might also be surprised to hear that a lot of participants did actually administer the most dangerous shocks. After the experiment was over, Milgram asked a group of his students how many participants they thought would deliver the highest shock. And the students predicted 3%. But in the most well-known variation of the study, a shocking 65% of participants reached the highest level of the shocks. And every single participant reached 300 volt levels. So the Milgram shock study took place over 50 years ago, and it's still considered one of the most controversial and infamous studies in modern history. The study even inspired TV movies. But not everyone praises Milgram for his boldness. The results of the study aren't particularly optimistic, and there have been critiques from psychologists over the years. After all, Milgram's selection of participants wasn't perfect. All of the participants were male, a group that only represents 50% of the population. Would the results be different if women were asked to deliver the electric shocks? Another factor to consider is that, like in the Stanford prison experiment, all of the participants answered a newspaper ad to participate in the study for money. Would the results have been different if the participants were not the type to volunteer for an unknown study? Other critics believe that documentation of Milgram's experiment suggests that some participants were coerced into completing the study. Psychologist Gina Perry believes that participants were even bullied into completing the study. Perry also believes that Milgram failed to tell the participants about the truth of the study. Rather than telling participants that a learner was an actor and shocks were never delivered, experimenters simply allowed participants to calm down after the study and then send them home. She believes many were never told the truth, and in that case, it's not very ethical, especially when their participation could have meant injuring another person. Moving on, let's talk a little bit about replications. Because with most of these studies happening 50 years ago, psychologists have attempted to retest Milgram's theories, and it's been hard to replicate the study because of the controversial methods. But similar studies have slightly tweaked Milgram's methods and have yielded similar results. Other replications takes Milgram's findings a step further. People are more obedient than they might seem. 
Now, does this mean that we're all bad people, just hiding under a mirage of sound judgment? Not really. Five years after the publication of Milgram's experiment, a psychologist, Walter Mischel, published Personality and Assessment. It suggested that trait theorists were looking at personality theory all wrong. He suggested that different situations could drive different behaviors. Thus, something called situationism was born. Studies like Milgram's experiment and the Stanford Prison Experiment are still considered supporting evidence of situationism. So, let me ask you the questions at the beginning of the video. Would you give someone a deadly electric shock? Would you follow orders to commit a violent crime against an innocent person? Would you support an unjust cause just because someone told you to? Or would it just depend on the situation? I hope you really enjoy this video on the Milgram shock study, and I definitely hope you learned something. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment below or check out some of the other videos in my social psychology series. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.